On this episode of Gambler Spec, we're making a go-kart out of a moving dolly. Let's get started. So for a while now, I've been on the lookout for everyday items that you could use to kind of get you started on a go-kart or build a frame. And looking at the hand trucks or the moving dollies, it just seemed like a logical place to start to kind of get the frame, most of the pieces and most of the metal that you would need. So let me show you what I bought. So this is a 700 pound hand truck. Uh, I bought it at Harbor Freight. Uh, it was on sale for 49 bucks, so that worked out well. And the reason why I always thought a moving dolly or a hand truck would be a good option for a go-kart frame is number one, they're pretty inexpensive, pretty easy to find. I saw several on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. None had exactly what I was looking for. And also, I wanted to be able to do one that anyone could just go pick up if they wanted to make their own. So Harbor Freight had a couple of models. The 600 pound model did not have this tube here which I think I can use. Um, this one has the nice plate at the bottom, which I think you could use for an engine mounting plate. Uh, it's got the nice shape at the front, which to me looks like the front of a go-kart. And then you get this no nice long tube down the middle, which I think you can use for some of the other things or like cross bracing or whatever you might need. So step one is gonna be getting this thing unwrapped, cut it up into pieces, and then we'll get it laid out on the floor and see what we got. So this is what we got to work with. I cut up all the pieces. You've got to be careful when you cut these up. My main concern was keeping the structure of the main frame. Um, so you'll want to lean your cuts away from the main frame. So that caused a little hole in this one, which I don't think is a big deal. That's going to mainly, I think, be used for like the front axle piece for the spindles to come off of. Um, and then probably one or two more cross braces going back, depending on how much material I have. So my thought was for these pieces, this will come up to hold the steering shaft. I'm not sure I'll be able to use this for a steering shaft, but hey, maybe, we'll see. Um, and then, of course, the engine plate. This is nice, heavy duty steel, so that should work. I'm not sure how to finish the back part of this at all. So we're just gonna have to play that by ear. But that would work for the engine mounting plate. So let me kind of mock this up here with the tires and the seat that I got. All right, so everything is just kind of duct taped and lean into place uh, for the envisioning phase of the project. But looking at it, I mean, you kind of get the idea. It looks like it's, it's go-kart-ish. So a couple things I know right away, the length is gonna be a concern for me. That was a concern in, in starting the project. Will I have enough length with this dolly to have the pedals at a reasonable distance? These are the wheels and tires that I picked. Uh, they're just some little five inch slicks. I wanted to be able to do drifting. There's a lot cheaper options if you're just looking to do something inexpensive. Um, the seat, this is like a standard school seat. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Someone was giving away a stack of them. This one is the bigger, bigger one. It's actually the biggest one that it came with. And it really looks too big for the cart. I'm not sure that's gonna work out. That one's gonna be pretty small. Um, I'm not real sure yet. I mean, we're just still in the very beginning phases of this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mocked up and see, see if that's gonna work or if I have to buy another seat online. I'd like to avoid that if possible, but I'm gonna spend some time just looking at this and then make a plan.
right, we've made some progress on the go-kart here. Let me show you where we're at. So, as you can see, it's looking more like a go-kart. Uh, starting with the rear axle. The challenge that I had is figuring out with the total length of the hand truck being pretty short, how am I gonna fit everything on here? Um, if you were just doing a standard like drive wheel and you weren't worried about getting it super low, what you probably wanna do is just mount your axle off the frame here, go straight out, do your drive wheel. If you're doing a live axle, you could just put these axle mounts up underneath and then the engine would sit on the frame, no problem. Well, I'm trying to make something I can use for drifting and I want the center of gravity to be as low as possible. So that means mounting the axles on top of the frame, which means I have no room to put the engine and then the axle and have room for my seat and my legs. The other option would be to put the ax, move the axle up and put the engine behind it. Um, but that just seemed a little bit odd. It made the wheelbase kind of funky. I don't know, I just wasn't, wasn't super happy with it. But taking this plate off the bottom of the hand truck, basically what I did was trim off the excess that I didn't need. This is just the size of a standard engine plate, five and a half inches. Um, I came up four inches, uh, made a mark across the back, grounded down, and then re-welded it at a 90 degree angle. Um, and what that's gonna do is allow me to put my engine up above the axle. Um, this is a drift trike axle kit from BMI. Um, so it comes with the sprocket, it comes with the bearings, it comes with the mounts. Um, I also, it also came with uh, the hubs, which, at, which you use one here and two in each wheel. Um, so I think this is gonna be okay. Um, the main issue I had was supporting it when I only have a few pieces I can use uh, in the cross bracing. I didn't have another one that I could use out back um, I was thinking, you know, you'd be able to go up and back down again, but there's not enough, there's not enough pieces, there's not enough material to put an extra bar in the middle. And so the way I did it was I put the one bar here, bent this at a 90, that mounts off of here, that should give that lots of strength, and then it actually welds um, to the top of the axle mount there. So the whole thing is really well supported. It's just tacked into place now, but it's already super, super strong. I mean, this piece of steel is made to handle 700 plus pounds. And so not really worried about it bending. I am super concerned with how I'm gonna get the, get the torque converter to connect to this. I may have to build some spacers um, to get it up. So we'll see. Uh, the steering was the, the next biggest challenge. I have no idea if this is going to work out. Um, but what I did was I tried to keep, again, the frame as low as possible. So I took a couple pieces of the tubing, worked out the angles that I wanted. So basically, this is going to give me a little bit more um, angle on my turning. By turning this at an angle, I've got just a little bit of caster. Um, and then I do have some camber as well built in so i think it'll work okay i'm not positive i'm not doing super high speeds if i'm doing drifting so i think it'll be all right and then um of course the steering hoop i've got there not sure on the height exactly and then that's the seat i picked up off amazon it's got a little bit better support if you're going sideways so for sure all this stuff is potentially going to need to be changed by the time I get to the final rendition of the go-kart. So it's all just kind of tacked into place. I need to figure out still the steering. So I've got to get some tie rods and then figure out if I can use this as my steering shaft. It kind of seems like it could be long enough. Um, not exactly sure yet. So I've got to order some pedals for it. I've got to order a steering wheel and some tie rods. So I'll take some measurements there and then still deciding on the engine um, on which one I want to use. So a couple weeks ago, I saw a guy who had a listing on Facebook for some pressure washers that didn't work. Pumps had gone out. Had good success with those in the past, uh, pulling the pumps off and just using the motor. So here's what I got. He sold me these three pressure washers for 50 bucks total, which if I can get one of these to run, totally worth it. If I can get more than one to run, even better. So 
I got this one here, which he said ran the most recently. Um, I think that was, I think within the last year, possibly is what he said. Uh, so the Honda 190, um, we got the Subaru seven horse, which is slightly older. I think this one hasn't run in two or three years. And then the big boy Honda 13 horse. And I think he said this one hadn't run in eight years. So I'm not sure exactly which one's gonna be best for this project, but I think really the only place to start is to just take the pumps off, see which one of these, if any, will run, and then make a determination on what we use for the project. Okay, so all I did so far was just pull that pump off and then check the oil, make sure we got oil. I smelled the gas. It doesn't smell too old. Uh, he did say it ran, so uh, we'll give it a pull and just uh, see what happens. Ah, choke is up. Sweet. Well, that's cool. That's why people buy Hondas, I guess. But yeah, that seemed to fire it up. Just took a couple pulls. So uh, that's a win. I got the garage closed, so I'm not gonna run it too much longer, but that should run. So uh, let's go for the Subaru next. All right, so we got the pump off the back of the Subaru and added some fuel, and you can see it's pouring everywhere out of the carburetor. So. Should have known better than to add as much gas as I did, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this carb off and see what it looks like. All right, so we got the carb off. You can see this is the gas shut off. The lever's broken, which made it a little bit tricky for me to get the gas turned off, which is why I got so much all over the floor. Uh, just a little bit of sediment in the bottom of the bowl. So I'm gonna take my carb cleaner here and go through and see if I can clean this thing up, and then we'll put it back on. All right, so I took the carb off. Sprayed it out a little bit. I'm not sure if I got the leaks fixed yet. I may have drained all the gas out of the tank. But I'm going to go ahead and try to fire it and we'll see what happens. Choke on. Ooh. Well, it's not locked up and uh, started to try to fire there. Not bad shaking the cobwebs off a little bit and uh, I think it's all right I mean the carb didn't look terrible and it started so sweet that's uh, two out of three now the big boy that I've been waiting for give that a shot here okay you got the pump off of this one definitely the toughest one to get off by far probably because it's been sitting the longest but check the size of the shaft on that that thing is massive but now I can hear that there's fuel in here. Thing's trying to tip over. There's definitely fuel in here and it's definitely old and something is rattling in there. So I'm gonna pull this tank off, I think. Oh man, this thing must fall over. I'm gonna pull this tank off and dump it out and then see what we got on the carb. All right, this feels like it has a ton of fuel in it. Well, let's try to catch it and see if we can see the condition of this. I'm going to try to dump it into this bucket here without making too much of a mess. Mm, it's kind of peachy. Oh, wow. Is that? Come out! Come out! Is it a 
attached. All right, I'm gonna have to get a flashlight or something, see what that is. But there's the old fuel, definitely varnishy. Not a lot of sediment though. And the tank from what I can see looks pretty good. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out what's in there. And then here's the carb. Uh, you can see it's got nice black varnish. So we'll pull that apart and clean it up next. All right, so good news, as you might've guessed, it was just the strainer basket that was in the bottom. And the nice part was the plastic wasn't too brittle, so I'll be able to reuse that. Probably because it was soaked in that gas the whole time. Uh, so trying to take this carb off, and I can't get the governor rod out because the throttle's completely froze up. As I look in the back, I can kind of see, see that glue, glue in the butterfly. So I'm gonna soak this thing in carb cleaner and see if I can at least unseize this, and then once I do that, I think I can get it off without damaging too much here. All right, so that's what came out of the carb. It is really stinky. Uh, we got the linkage all freed up here. Let's see if you can see it moving freely. And we got this all put back together. So I'm gonna slap this air filter on, and then we'll see if it, uh, if it runs. I think this way is choke. All right, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> wow, that was like immediate, and then it didn't want to turn off. Uh, this thing is like ready for action. I guess it made me nervous. Not turning off with the kill switch, but sweet. Didn't even take like multiple pulls, fired right up. So I've never really had one of these uh, big blocks before, but now we got it. I'd call that a win. We got three pressure washer motors up and running in an afternoon. And uh, let's see which one we want to use here. All right, so here's the engine situation. So this is the Honda big block, 13 horse. I actually drilled the holes to fit the big block in the engine mounting plate. That was probably a little bit optimistic. So when you take a look at it, it is a humongous engine for this little go-kart. So it's gonna push your seat forward a bit. Um, however, it is pretty awesome. I mean, obviously we could ditch the tank, we could ditch the air filter box, we could ditch that muffler. It would look a lot smaller. But my main concern with going with the Honda three horse is the girth. This thing is super heavy, and I feel like when you're sliding, that much weight would be too much. I think it would just be a little bit too much in the back. I don't know if it would just give you too much grip, or if it would just be so much momentum um, when you turn. I'm not sure. I just think that's going to be too big, too bulky. So let me show you the next one. So this is the Honda GX190. So obviously you're going from 13 horse down to like a six ish horsepower motor much much smaller you definitely i left the seat in the same place but you can see you already got more room this is the muffler which is kind of unfortunate for the seating position you'd have to do a, a 90 straight out of there but you're still going to be risking you know the back of your neck on that muffler uh so that's been the biggest downside is just the exhaust comes out right at your back which is not ideal and then I don't know, horsepower wise, this is gonna be quite as much as I'm gonna want for spinning those tires. So I think this one's a good option. I do like the tank being in the back, but I actually, I have this in mind for a mini bike. I kinda wanna save it for a mini bike with that tank set up. So I think let's do the Goldilocks and find the one in the middle here. Okay, so this is the Subaru. This is the seven horse EX21 model. So it's gonna have power wise between the two, it's gonna have more than the 190, less than the 13 horse. Um, so right in the middle, weight wise, it's much lighter than the big block. I, to me, it doesn't feel much heavier than the 190. Size wise, you've got some space here. The gas tank is the main problem. 
it's got this little like plastic piece on here, which I thought maybe you could like convert that into a headrest or something. But um, I think it'd be easier to just take the tank off, knock these off. This is the governor, so that'll come off as well. So if you take that off, now you've got you know a couple inches of leg room you can make up. The exhaust exits up here on the top, so you don't have to worry about that being close to you. And then as far as the gas tank, uh, I picked this up off Amazon. It's just kind of a little small auxiliary tank, and I feel like we could, you know, make a mount pretty easily to just set it up here on top. Much smaller, uh, the capacity is going to be down quite a bit um, on that one, but I don't, I don't imagine this is going to be like a cross-country vehicle. Uh, but that's kind of my thought. It's in the middle for horsepower, it's in the middle for weight, and once you take that tank off, it gives you, I feel like, the most leg room, because you can scoot that seat back a little bit further. The downsides, um, the big block gave us more space here between the sprocket and the shaft. Um, this is also the ugliest engine out of all of them. It's got a leak here. Um, on the oil seal, seems like that's pouring out oil, so I'll need to replace that. Not a huge deal. I'm going to take the governor off anyway, so I'll replace the seal at the same time. See if I can clean this up. Then we'll be able to take this muffler off, do some kind of a straight pipe or something coming out the back. The air cleaner box will all come off as well, and we'll just add a filter on the end of the carb. And then hopefully with some degreasing and maybe some spray paint, we can make that look a little better. But that's kind of my thought. I think... I think that's going to be the way that I go, at least that's what I'm going to try for. Um, I could do the Predator, I do have a 212 that's on the lawnmower I could steal, uh, but I think this is better. I think, I think this, will, this will work, it's got more power, more torque than the Predator 212 anyway, and it was basically free. So I'm going to clean this one up, do my best to make this one work. My other thing I'm working on, um, looking at the pedal situation, trying to decide what to do for a brake. And I went with the drum style brake, and the main reason was cost. When I looked at the disc brakes, which, you know, discs is always seems like the way you want to go, the surface area on the, on the inexpensive disc brakes is like the size of a quarter. And so if you're clamping, you know, two quarters together on either side of that disc, it doesn't seem like it's going to get you a whole lot of brake, braking force. And if you're trying to lock the tires up, you want as much force as quickly as possible. So I went with the drum style. Um, and then figuring out the pedals, how am I going to do that? I want the gas on the right, but also I'm not sure if I can put this drum on the left. And I started looking at the pieces I have left. I have this one bar left, and I have this grip. So you can see where this is going. So I'm thinking, I got a couple other random pieces of tube kicking around here. So if I add those on here, just piece it together, doesn't matter, because I'm going to cover it with this grip. That gives me a, a semi-long handle, right? So let's put this together. So let's say it's, you know, that long-ish. Mount that up right there. Now, you got yourself a handbrake. And as far as connection-wise, that's a pretty short distance. So I feel like that could be the way to go. The linkage is gonna be my biggest struggle. So that's the goal. I'm gonna try to figure out how I can adapt some linkage to make this handle work as a handbrake going to the back brakes and I got pedals on the way and a steering wheel on the way to get that going. So let me get this engine cleaned up and make some progress and I'll get back with you.
so several painful hours later, this is what's left of my hand truck. And this is what the go-kart looks like. So pretty happy with the way most of this is turning out. Um, the handbrake I think is gonna be great. Uh, I was able to get some extra length there just by welding those tubes on and most of the ugliness will be covered up with that handle with the grip. I actually cut this piece, this curved piece, um, thinking I was gonna have it run into a T, but then I didn't have enough room for my legs so I ended up welding that back on and then just use like a saddle type mount to mount that onto the tube that pivots on the bolt. So that works well. Uh, 3 8 steel rod goes back and presses down on the brake. I think that's gonna work just fine. Um, I used that steel plate at the bottom of the hand truck for a few different things. I made all three of these connections to the steering. Um, these were the curved end pieces to put them together. Um, and then these bearings that are in here are the actual bearings from the wheels that came with the hand truck, which is kind of nice to get a little bit of movement out of it. Um, and then this is the five inch axle that came on the hand truck. I went and bought a half inch piece of steel tube from the plumbing section at Home Depot and that let me work off this 5 eighths, added just a couple inches and then helped me couple into the steering wheel. Steering wheel is off of Amazon, super super basic. It actually connects to a washer, just your standard Home Depot washer there. Just drilled some holes. Um, the pedal off Amazon. It's gonna be fine. I still haven't worked out the spring back. I need to get me just a piece of steel tubing or something for in here and a stopper. But I think that's gonna be fine. Fitting on here is definitely the biggest challenge. Um, so that's kind of the best, best I could do. Engine is much, much cleaner. Uh, we got the straight pipe set up. This is actually using pipe off of the pressure washers. So the pressure washer where I got the Subaru motor I just took a couple pieces of pipe, made a straight pipe, and then just a super, super basic mount for the fuel tank and a fuel filter. Um, got the seat mounted in place, got the steering all connected up. These are tie rods just off of Amazon. Um, that's definitely my biggest question mark is the steering. I've never really set this up before. It seems like it's got pretty good angle uh, as far as the turning goes, I just don't know. I mean, these, these joints, they, ha they go through a lot of movement and I've never really set that up before, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work out. Um, the other issue that I have is back here with the torque converter, with the engine now bolted down to the plate where I had it, there's just no clearance in here for your torque converter plate. The sprocket ends up hitting up into the bottom of it. Um, obviously there's some configuration ways you can turn that torque converter. If you can't move the torque converter plate in far enough, then you can't get the chain to link up to the sprocket. So I went ahead, grabbed this centrifugal clutch. You can see, I mean, there's just, there's no room here. No room, you could move the engine back further. There is definitely some space here where you could kind of slide everything back. And that would be fine too. But I think for what I'm going for here, simple is better. Um, I've got just enough clearance, I feel like, here with the engine now, and we'll try the centrifugal clutch. If it doesn't work out, and if I decide I need to go torque converter, the solution's gonna be just put some spacers in there and then slap the torque converter on. So that's, it's doable, but for now, I wanna try it this way. Um, pretty happy with everything. I'm super nervous about the steering working out, but, I mean, at some point, you just gotta try it, right? So. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some welds on this thing, some real welds, get everything held in place, and then we'll see if we can actually drive it. We got the work done. Last few minute touches here, let me show you. So centrifugal clutch installed, 
got the chain on there. I added just a washer as a spacer underneath there to take up some of the slack in the chain. Probably have to adjust that on the final product here. Uh, I got my full range of motion spacers. They go up in here on your tie rod ends to give you a little bit more turning without binding. So that's installed. Uh, I let out a little bit of slack on the gas pedal because on the first little roll around, it seemed like it was a little too tight. At least my leg was getting cramped up. So I think we're ready for a test drive. See how this goes here. That thing is hilarious. It drove pretty good. I mean, one-handed steering, it, it never felt that scary. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, I think next thing we're gonna do, I picked up this tube. On the turns, it really scrubs the tires pretty bad. It does not wanna, it does not wanna turn. The front end must be way too light. So uh, you can see it scrubbing just from that little ride. Um, so I think uh, I got this pipe. I found it was 30 bucks for the whole piece. Not a huge fan of the blue but it's what I got. So I needed something pretty cheap. So I think it was $34 after tax. Cut this up into pieces and stick it on the tires. And I think we might as well go ahead and strip this down and paint it and uh, get it ready to go. Next time you see it, we'll have a finished product.
right, well that's gonna do it for the moving dolly go-kart. I'm super happy with the way things turned out. It looks awesome, it's a lot of fun. Uh, my drifting skills are terrible and it's gonna need some tweaking before I think it's just right, but I'm happy with the way things turned out. Obviously we could have done it a lot cheaper and there would have been a lot simpler ways to do it. So let me know in the comments if you want more of a DIY moving dolly go-kart. I think there's some things we could do to save money and also make it a little easier. So let me know if that's something you wanna see or if there's another Harbor Freight tool you think would be a cool go-kart, let me know. And then be sure to subscribe if you wanna see that happen. But for now, appreciate you watching.